Hey everybody, I'm Jeremy from Blockchain WTF, and welcome back to ICO or No, a series where we explore some of the hottest ICOs being released. Today we're going to be going over Kasha, a project that is looking to correct a broken financial system by bringing affordable banking services to the unbanked. Of course, we'll go over the four questions we use to evaluate all the ICOs we look into, so sit back while we do all the heavy lifting to get you up to date on Kasha. Let's start with our first question. What is the Kasha project and what problem is it looking to solve? Our banking systems are built upon traditional route infrastructure where moving money requires huge processing efforts coordinated by several parties and that really only creates endless problems. Basically, the centralization of banks has really made it impossible for consumers to have fair banking solutions. Kasha aims to revolutionize banking for everyone. They've outlined four goals that they hope that their project can achieve. The first is powering financial products for the banked and unbanked. Kasha's digital and transparent services are not only attractive for the bank population, people that have existing services, but they can also deliver financial inclusion solutions to the 2.5 billion unbanked and the 1 billion underbanked, those who don't have enough services, across the globe, thereby creating a unique cross-border platform which can serve the entire population, not just in one geographic area, but the whole world. Not only is Kasha looking to bring banking solutions to the unbanked and underbanked, they're also looking to facilitate low-cost currency exchanges by implementing their own platform. This will allow people to send money across borders quickly for a small flat fee, a fraction of current costs, which today average about 7 to 12%. For example, Kasha's platform will automatically offer you the best foreign exchange rate based off of a list of options. Another goal that Kasha has is enabling investments in the global economy. Kasha products are supposed to enable users to access the global economy in a decentralized manner. Right now, in order for these places to grow economically, they're going to have to obtain loans, and right now that's just not an option. Kasha hopes to facilitate the transfer of value across borders, and that allows investors greater diversification in their portfolio and hopefully higher yields. And the last goal just reaffirms their dedication to having an open API and their developer SDK. And now that we know a little bit about the Kasha project, let's move on to our next question. What are the market conditions facing the ICO? Over the years through globalization, the world economies have become increasingly interconnected. The financial crisis of 2008 showed the cracks in the underlying structure of our global financial system. And since everything is so intertwined, well, economies started dropping like a chain of dominoes. Even today, the world economy is trying to make up the ground it lost during this time. By 2009, with economies reeling, it became more and more clear that our financial system was definitely broken. Unfortunately, the institutions that had a hand in this debacle are so ingrained not just in our financial system, but also society and even our laws. Any change to the system was obviously going to be an uphill battle, and most didn't know about the alternative that was quietly being created. When I heard about blockchain, the biggest potential that I saw in the technology was the ability to transfer money in an easy, fast, and inexpensive way. Currently, if you want to send money out of the country, it's going to take several days to clear multiple banks, and each one is going to take their fee, making the whole process an annoying headache. There's a lot of people who emigrate to areas with more economic opportunity, and they in turn send money back to their family in their home country in order to help make a better life for them. Do banks do the right thing, or make sure that they can take the maximum fee possible? Obviously, the latter. Transferring $100 may result in the banks taking as much as 20%. Another potential for blockchain technology that Kasha points out that we already mentioned, about 2.5 billion people around the world don't have access to simple banking services. These people have little hope for economic mobility as they don't have access to bank accounts or lines of credit. Basically, they are completely disconnected from the global economy. Kasha definitely encompasses values that people can rally around, and they're seizing on this opportunity. Obviously, this project isn't purely altruistic as some fees will be charged, but the fees Kasha has laid out compared to that of existing banks, well, those are numbers that can't be ignored by consumers. They're basically cutting out existing middlemen, 
the banks and replacing their services with cheaper versions that do the same exact thing, all by implementing blockchain technology. The only thing that makes me weary is that Kasha is trying to provide almost every service existing banks provide. And that's a lot of services to roll out all at once. Additionally, this brings the issue of scaling into question. Will the Kasha network and blockchain it relies on be able to handle the load of transactions that Kasha promises? Only time will tell. And this is really a potential hurdle. There's nothing wrong with supporting an ambitious project. Just make sure that the project's goals are realistic. There's nothing to say Kasha's expectations are off, but it definitely is a big endeavor. And that leads us directly into our third question. Who are the people behind the Kasha project? Many white papers make you dig for info on their teams, but Kasha is not one of them. They list their members of their team along with their accomplishments right there in the white paper, and it isn't a surprise with credentials like that. The team can best be described as tech people mixed with experts in monetary systems. Their CVs are littered with projects that they have worked on, obviously, but what really stands out is what happened to those projects. Spoiler alert, they all found great success or were bought out by larger companies. Another interesting thing I noticed about the team, they have some former banking insiders, people who know how to navigate that industry, team members who have played that game and know the inner workings and weaknesses of the existing banking system. Think about it. Who's more likely to take down the banking industry? Outsiders rallying against the system or those who have already been in that system, recognize their deficiencies and know which pain points to press. And moving on to our very last question, where are the details of the token sale? The token sale will start November 6 and run until all allocated tokens are sold. They estimate that the original price is to be around 10 cents per token. Token sale is responsible for releasing 51% of the total supply and their max, what they're capping it on, is 105,000 ETH. Interesting note about the project, the beta platform test is complete and they're moving to a live version very soon. And that's a review on the very ambitious Kasha project. It's definitely a cool project. However, they're going to have to do a lot to uproot the existing banking system. Like I said earlier, banks are ingrained in our laws, our society, everybody's used to it. So it's going to be an uphill battle. However, if Kasha can deliver on what they're offering in the form of lower fees, basically easier banking and banking for the unbanked, well, then it might be a project to watch out for. If you enjoy this video, please be sure to leave us a like and also subscribe because we got more ICO or no's coming up. You don't want to miss out on those. Also be sure to check out our website at blockchain.wtf. I'm Jeremy from blockchain.wtf and we'll see you next time.